Hi, my name's Mike. In today's video, I'm calling it Through Much Tribulation, Enter into the Kingdom of God. Um, I just want to thank all my brothers and sisters out there for their prayers. Um, and I'm feeling better. My voice is sounding a little bit better. Um, so, the title of my video is taken from Acts 14.22. Let me just read that. Confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. Many want to believe they will be gone before anything happens to them. They want to hear what tickles the ears and sounds good. Persecution, tribulation, not me. Christ died for us so we don't have to. He won't be up his bride are some of the sayings uh, the Christians use. But remember, God sent his son to die a horrific death. Not only that, after Jesus died, all of his apostles, apart from John, was martyred. Also after that was 300 years of Christian persecution, where Christians were crucified, burnt, killed, by lions, etc., by Nero and other Roman leaders. It's all part of history. You can look it up. All those that want to live a, li a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. It's part of Scripture. 2 Timothy 3.12 Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. We all are partakers of Christ's sufferings. Let me just read um, 1 Peter um, chapter 4, verse 1. For as much then as Christ have suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that has suffered in the flesh have ceased from sin. And um, I'll go to 12 to 14. Beloved, think you not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also exceed in joy. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and of God rest upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on his behalf. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. If it first begins at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Also, excuse me, if we read Second Corinthians... 1, 3 to 7. 2 Corinthians 1, 3 to 7. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comfort us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherein we ourselves are comforted of God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also bounded by Christ. And whether we be afflicted, it's for your consultation and salvation, which is effectual in enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer, or whether we be comforted, it's for your consolation and salvation. And our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that we, as we are partakers of the sufferings, so shall you also of the consultation. So we are partakers of Christ's sufferings. We will not be able to avoid um, suffering because we are partakers. We won't disappear in a rapture without suffering persecution or tribulation. Second Thessalonians 1, 4-6 So that we ourselves glory in you, in the churches of God, for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that ye endure which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God, that you may be counted worthy 
of the kingdom of God, for which ye also suffer, seeing is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. So why am I doing another video about this subject, about trials and tribulations and persecutions before the gathering? It's because Satan, the master deceiver, has deceived most of the church into believing we will be gone before any persecution or tribulation occurs. But as you can see from scripture, that's not the case. Satan is lying to you to make you feel, to make you fall. Imagine thinking you were going to be gone, but now you are in prison for believing in Christ. And then they offer you a choice to renounce Christ or be killed. Most will fail because they were not prepared to die for Christ. Jesus died for us, so we should have the same mindset as Christ and be willing to do the same. 1 Peter 4.1 for as much then as Christ hath suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that hath suffered in the flesh hath ceased from sin. This video is not to cause fear, as we have no fear. 2 Timothy 1.7 For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and of self-control. Matthew 10.28 And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul rather fear him who can destroy both body and soul in hell. <coughs> Excuse me. First Peter three fourteen. But even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled. God doesn't change. What happened before will happen again, and is still happening nowadays in many countries like China, North Korea, Nigeria, India. Israel, etc. Christian persecution is on the rise and many have died for their faith in Christ. Excuse me. Open Doors, an organisation that supports Christian persecution, reported that 90% of the more than 5,600 Christians killed for their faith last year were from Nigeria, with the total number of Christians killed in 2023 up 80% from five years ago. Do you think that Christians in these countries mentioned believe in the pre-tribulation rapture? Or Christians in war-torn countries, do you think they believe in the pre-tribulation rapture? We need to wake up the church and get them prepared for persecution and be ready to endure to the end. Whether it's enduring till Christ returns for us or dying for Christ. Um, let me just read. Um, First Thessalonians four fifteen to seventeen. Uh, so First Thessalonians four fifteen to seventeen. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord should not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with a voice of an archangel, with a trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So we're not all going to die. But make sure you are ready and willing to die for your faith in Christ Jesus. As the very first people mentioned in Revelation in the lake of fire is this. Revelation 21, 8. But the fearful, and other translations, cowardly and unbelieving, and abominable, and the murderers, whoremongers, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in a lake which burn with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Imagine the first words, the fearful, or cowardly, first to be mentioned in the lake of fire. Cowardly, lacking courage, weakly, fearful. If you are this, then you're very likely going to fall in the last days. Now to finish with more scriptures to back up 
but we will endure trials and tribulations and persecutions before any gathering. Romans 12.12 12, Rejoicing in the hope, patient in tribulation, consistent in prayer. Um, also, 2 Thessalonians 1, 4 to 6. So that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure, which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God, that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God for which you also suffer, seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. Uh, Revelation 2.9 I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich, and I know the blaspheme of them which say they are Jews and are not, but they are a synagogue of Satan. <clears throat> and Acts 14.22 Confirming the souls of the disciples exhorted them to continue in the faith and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. Uh, so seek Jesus Christ today in heartfelt prayer and repentance and turn away from sin. And to finish off, I'd like to summarise uh, a few bits about um, enduring uh, persecution, tribulation. Um, firstly, some Christians will not accept this message, and I know that because it speaks about the last days, that many will fall away. If one or two people hear this message, then great. Please be prepared for persecution, as many won't listen to this message. And like I said, scriptures have to be fulfilled. Many will be falling away. It talks about that in the last days. And I can read that from Matthew. 24, uh, verse 9. Then they shall deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Um, so many will believe uh, in their own thing about going before anything happens but you have to remember one, Satan doesn't fall until the sixth seal event meaning if you go up before the sixth seal you'll be in the middle of war in heaven two, in 1 Peter chapter 4 it states judgment starts at the house of God and if the righteous are scarcely saved, which it says in 1 Peter chapter 4, how can judgment start at the house of God if the house of God is church is gone? Thirdly, in Revelation chapter 6, it speaks of Christians killed. A certain number have to be killed before God's vengeance. And let me just read that. At Revelation chapter 6. Nine to eleven, and when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held, and they cried with a loud voice, saying, "How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth?" And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were, should be fulfilled. So a certain number have to be killed before God's vengeance. Also, in Psalms 91, it states, A thousand shall fall at your side, and with your eyes you will see the judgment of the wicked. Let me read that, Psalms 91. I'll read from verse 1 to 8. He that dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will serve the Lord. He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. 
He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings thou shalt trust. His truth should be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor for the arrow that fly by day, nor for the pestilence that walk in darkness, nor for the destruction that waste at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thy eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. And also, if we read uh, Malachi chapter 4. Verses 1 to 3. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. And a day that comes shall burn them up, say the Lord of hosts, that shall leave them neither root nor branch. And unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings. You shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall, and you shall tread down the wicked. For they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. So how can you tread down the wicked or see with your eyes the wicked being punished or the wicked fall by your side if you're gone in the rapture? Anyway, I'll leave it there and say anyone out there hasn't come to Lord Jesus, please don't wait as we're living in the last days. God bless. Bye-bye.